Hi there, this is Mike and Heidi from Blackhawk Paramotor for another Tips and Tricks. This is a short one and we're going to explain to you a little bit of the finer elements of the new Blackhawk Kestrel weight shift or high hang point harness. Since the introduction of the new harness, we've had a few questions regarding the straps. So Mike and I thought we'd do a quick Tips and Tricks video to address those questions right now with you. As you're aware, this is a new harness. What's really neat about the new Kestrel harness is that it fits both weight shift or high hang point. High hang point is the J-bar, weight shift is the articulating arms. So if, for instance, you purchase a high hang point machine with the J-bars, a year later you decide that you want to try the weight shift. All you need to do is buy the articulating weight shift arms. But there's been a few questions. People are asking what this strap is. There's one on each side. This is a safety strap for the articulating arm on the weight shift machine. If you have J-bar or high hang point, simply take this strap and tuck it away in the pocket. If you're flying the high hang point and you feel that you're never going to go to weight shift, you could just simply cut it off as well. That way it's not in your way. If you have the weight shift, it simply attaches to the bottom side of the the carabiner. Another thing we want to clarify are the straps right here in my hand. This first one, this is a hiking strap. So adjusting this will raise or lower the motor on your back, depending upon how you like it to feel. Us, we like it a little bit higher on our back. One thing you want to be careful though is that you don't want to pull this too tight. If you pull this strap too tight, then it might limit your ability to keep your arms up and fatigue your shoulders. So just be careful on those adjustments. This main strap here with the three loops are for those of you flying a high hang point setup. Typically, the carabiner will go in the center loop. This strap is important because those of you flying the high hang point setup will use this to make sure that you have the right CG or center of gravity. This is the angle at which you're flying. For us, we like to have our CG set at about two to three degrees. Once you've set that, you can take this strap and actually wind it up and make it look like that. Once you fold this up, there is a stretch material included on the harness that you can stretch around it and it will hold it firmly in place. Some have asked what this Velcro here on the side, top and other side of the harness are for. This is pretty exciting. This is for your reserve bridle. And indicated in red up here is where the reserve mallions will go. It's really a neat feature because now we're no longer using zip ties. Some people have asked what this zipper is in the back of the harness. This zipper allows you, when opened, to make the harness bigger. Or for those pilots that like to sit deeper in their seat, it allows them to sit deeper in their seat. Please note the elevation that the back of the seat is right now. To make this modification, I will simply undo these two Velcros. Now you can see the difference. It's worth a try. Try it out. If you don't like it, zip it back up. It's real simple. Another feature about this harness is the lid right here. Specifically, what is the lid for and how does it work? Well, the lid can either be short or longer, which allows for more leverage, which is good for those that are utilizing the weight shift. Absolutely. So if, if the seat is longer and flatter, this gets further out underneath your legs. So when you push down to weight shift, for instance, there's going to be more uh, leverage against the uh, articulating arms. What I like about this feature on a long cross-country trip is the fact that I can adjust these straps to kind of move my leg position in the harness while I'm flying to give myself more of a rest. Now I noticed you have a Velcro down here, don't you? This opening here can be opened up and you can slide out and add or subtract padding on this uh, lid as well, huh? Underneath here then is a final piece of Velcro where you could put your speed bar. Nice. It's a really good feature. How many people do you see walking around and their speed bars are dangling underneath their harness or getting wrapped up in their feet? Yeah. So that's a neat feature and that sticks pretty well too. 
great. Now that we're mentioning the speed bar, which I think way more people should utilize, the pulleys, speed bar pulleys. There's four of them on this harness, two on each side. That's a neat deal. Basically, the speed bar passes through this pulley here first, comes up to this pulley, and as you might be able to see, this pulley here is aligned with the carabiner perfectly. In other words, your risers. Your pulley is up high on your risers for your speed bar. This pulley will go straight up to it. Pulleys work best when they're pulling evenly against each other. To pull it diagonally doesn't work. It's much harder on your legs and you don't get nearly as much feel. Yes, a speed bar talks to you. One thing I like about this harness too are how easy these buckles are to operate and how light they are. Very easy. Since we've recently received some questions regarding the new harness, we just thought that we would do a quick tips and tricks video on this harness. If there's any questions you have whatsoever, of course, please give us a call. The other videos showing you how to install the harness on all of our units are still the same. This harness installs exactly the same as those. We just wanted to show you a few of the little features of this harness in a quick video. Thanks for watching today's tips and tricks videos with Blackhawk Paramotor. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or shoot us an email. Thanks for watching. Thank you.